Hello, this is Sherry with Full Armor of God, and today I'm coming to you with a scripture that was given to me during a personal message for me, and it really has nothing to do with my personal message, but it does, I believe, have something to do with the message I gave from the Lord yesterday about the drought and the food shortages that are coming to America and the scripture that I was given at the end of my message from the Lord, my pers own personalized message, was Isaiah 19, 5 through 7. And I wanted to talk a little bit about Isaiah and the book of Isaiah, if you look at the very beginning, it gives a little description or a preview about Isaiah, and it explains it. it's like a miniature Bible, that the first 39 chapters are similar to the books of the Old Testament, filled with judgment, and the judgments are from men who commit idolatrous actions and have sinned against God, but the last 27 chapters are messages of hope about our Messiah coming back, Jesus, our, our Savior, and pretty much what I'm trying to say is if it wasn't for the judgment on the land from the behaviors and actions committed against God, then we there would be no need for a Savior. And so I'll just get right to the scripture, which is Isaiah chapter 19, verses 5 through 7. And it says in the King James Version Bible, And the waters shall fail from the sea, and the rivers shall be wasted and dried up, and they shall turn the rivers far away, and the brooks of defense shall be emptied and dried up. The reeds and the flags shall wither, the paper reeds by the brooks, by the mouth of the brooks, and everything sown by the brooks shall wither, be driven away, and be no more. And in the Bible, this is relating to the story of Egypt. If you read the beginning of chapter 19, it states, The burden of Egypt, behold, the Lord writheth upon a swift cloud, and shall come up, shall come into Egypt, and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence, and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight every one against his brother, and every one against his neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the counsel thereof, and they shall seek to the idols and to the charmers and to them that have similar or f have familiar spirits and to the wizards. And the Egyptians will I give over into the hand of a cruel lord, and a fierce king shall rule over them, saith the Lord of hosts. So I don't know if this is describing similarities on Egypt in comparison to America and what's going on in our country right now with no you know people rising up against one another and the different political viewpoints and all of the uh, problems going on in our country and now with all of the disasters, the wildfires in the West and 
now this is like a foretelling of the drought that's coming. I don't know. I'm just putting this out there. I don't know. You know, I'm not an expert on the Bible, I, I must admit. Um, but he led, I know he led me to this verse for a reason. And let me see what your thoughts are. And um, all I know is he just wants you to repent. The Lord Jesus wants you to repent for your sins. And if you look at Isaiah, like I said, the last 27 chapters are about salvation, which begins, I think, in Isaiah chapter 39. I'm trying to flip to it real quick here. And if you read a little bit further, like Isaiah 39, 3, it says, Then came Isaiah the prophet unto the king Hezekiah, and said unto him, What said these men, and from whence came they unto thee? And Hezekiah said, They are come from a far country unto me, even from Babylon. Then said he, What have they seen in thine house? And Hezekiah answered, All that is in mine house have they seen. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not shewed them. Then said Isaiah to Hezekiah, Hear the word, the word of the Lord of hosts. Behold, the days come that all that is in thine house and that which thy fathers have laid up in store until this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, said the Lord, and of thy sons that shall issue from thee, which thou shalt beget, shall they take away, and they'll, they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Then said Hezekiah to Isaiah, Good is the word of the Lord, which thou hast spoken. He said, Moreover, for there shall be peace and truth in my days. So, I don't know if this is like a foreshadowing of what's to come with the judgments and then with Jesus coming through the clouds at the rapture and rescuing us from the judgments. But I'm going to read through Isaiah a little bit more intense, intently and try to come up with a better understanding of it. But I don't think it was any accident that I was led to that scripture, uh, Isaiah 19, verses 5 through 7, about the drought. So, um, my message for you for today is to be alert to what's going on in the country. Wake up, um, you know, look around. All the weather that I've ever known has never been like this before. And... The, the rising temperatures out west and even in Canada up over 100 degrees, 119 degrees. Um, it seems like we're in the days of judgment, the final days. And I just want to give you a warning. And I, I know he led me to that scripture for a reason. So this is my message for you today is to just pick up your Bible read through it. I'm going to be reading through Isaiah and see if I have any more revelations from Isaiah about the current conditions in America and what I believe is happening right now with the weather conditions and how it can ultimately affect our food supply and the way we're going to be able to survive in these final days. So my message to you is to, la to ask the Lord for forgiveness of sins and, and repent because keep looking up. Um, just keep looking up because he's going to be coming for us very, very soon. Thank you and have a blessed day in the Lord.